Hi, my name is Ashish and this is the new video for the AWS Solution Architect Associate Level Exam. I welcome you all to my channel. Please don't forget to subscribe, like and share these videos and to my channel. Okay, this video talks about how Amazon Route 53 routes the traffic for your domain. So this is the small example I want to show you. This is the end user when you browse a domain which is hosted on uh, that you have registered on Amazon uh, that goes to your domain DNS root name server and then they'll go to the name server for .com then the uh, www.example.com then the .com TLD it goes to the Route 53 name server because your domain is hosted onto this server then the Route 53 name server request comes to root 53 then the IP address of your hosted DNS server then it goes to your end user then it goes to example.com for the web server that is hosted on then the web page so let me just log on to the portal and show you how to uh, the register and how are the name server record and different records that you get okay I am on to my portal I click on route 53 there is no hosted zone here there is nothing that we get started now traffic management domain registration we try to do it but not okay if we click on get started now I do not have a hosted zone I showed you how to create a zone here you should own that zone public hosted zone I click on here this is the start of authority records these are the name server records so if I go back to that picture so let's say if my example is stop being lazy dot in right so what would happen is like end user would open a browser end user would open a browser here on here and user would open a browser he would enter the domain name this in our case it would be stopping lazy dot in the request for stop being lazy dot in is routed to the dns resolver which is typically managed by the users isp so you are accessing it over internet right you are accessing it over internet so if isp would be responsible your broadband connection would be responsible so the dns resolver for the isp forwards the request for the stop being lazy dot in domain to the dns root server initially it would not go to the amazon root 53 it would initially go to the dns root server as per the normal process the dns resolvers forward the request for this again this time to one of the top level domain that is the dot com domain here right the name server for .com responds to the request with the names of the four root 53 name servers that are associated with the, the domain. So first the request goes to the DNS root server, then the top level domain, then it goes servers, the name servers, these name servers, which Amazon gives us while we create the, uh, the domain. So now the DNS resolver stores the four root name server. That server that holds that for uh, stop being lazy dot in domain. The name server are typically cached for two days. It would be more for 48 hours. So now if I go back to my image, it would say the DNS resolvers choose a root 53 name server and forwards the request for the example.com to the name server that I just showed you on the console. The root 53 name server looks in for the stopping lazy.com hosted zone. Remember we created this hosted zone for the stopping lazy.in. So the root 53 name server will look in the stopping lazy.in hosted zone for the stopping lazy.com domain record it would get the associated value such as the IP address of a web server and returns the IP address to a DNS resolver so if I ping uh, the stopping lazy dot in it would give that IP address to my DNS resolver that DNS resolver finally has the IP address that my user would need here the DNS resolver would also cache the IP address for the stopping lazy dot in domain that I created so that it can respond more quickly next time now the web browser would send a request for example uh, for the stop being lazy dot in dot domain to the ip address that it got from the dns resolver 
this one, this IP address or the any other IP address. Uh, a web server running on an Amazon EC2 instance or an Amazon S3 bucket that configures as a website endpoint. Right? The web server or the other resource at the IP address returns the web page for my domain to the web browser and the web browser displays the page. So this is how the Route 53 would send your uh, traffic or route your traffic from for your domain to anybody, uh, any user across the world who is trying to access the web page. So I know, uh, I hope you got the uh, overview of how Amazon Route 53 works. I will share some more videos about the Amazon and it's more interesting topics. Please don't forget to subscribe, like to this channel. Till next time, have a great day ahead.